Australia is one of the most isolated countries on earth. It's not every day we have superstars break out into world dominance and really put a mark on pop culture. But we have had our fair share of talent make it internationally and make us all proud. Whether it's Michael Hutchins and NXS, Daniel Johns and Silverchair, or Kevin Parker and Tame Impala. And today we have the Kid Leroy. But this country suffers severely from something called Tall Poppy Syndrome. Where when someone achieves something great, a lot of their own will immediately do everything in their power to bring them back a level because they know they will never have a go at anything themselves. This is something I've seen Leroy suffer from a lot once he started to take over the world. But today I'm going to try and take you deep inside and show you how hard he hustled and wanted his success. This is the rise of the Kid Leroy. Real name, Charlton Howard, was born the 17th of August 2003 in Waterloo, Sydney City, Australia. His father, Nick Howard, was a music producer and sound engineer throughout the 2000s for artists like Delta Goodrum and had some sort of hand in the music industry. You can see Leroy clearly adopted a lot of his musical talent, but this didn't necessarily mean they had a lot of money growing up, and you think how much music producers and engineers these days that get paid peanuts and do it just for the passion. But like we all know, the music industry to be shady, and to put things into perspective, he's now a manager at a swimming centre teaching swimming lessons completely out of the music industry. And I would say he's happy living a normal, humble life away from the stress and dramas the music industry can bring. His mother, Sloane Howard, was a talent manager and music executive also throughout the 2000s. I think Leroy got a lot of his hustle and grind mentality from his mother. He's always said that his relationship with his mother has been super strong and he's always praised her in helping him become the man he is today. Like I said, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I was all over the place. So my best friend was my mom, you know, like I didn't... Um, so we, we got super close and it's like throughout that time and I just learned, you know, to trust my mom with everything that my mom's my best friend. I also saw her do a lot of stuff and put her life on the line for me. And that was like something, you know, like, I don't know when you see certain things, you just, you, you know, you never go against, you know, that person now because they, you know, you see different, different stuff. And I, I don't know, I still never met anyone as solid as her, so... Leroy's great-great-grandfather was a part of the stolen generation of children of mixed Aboriginal descent. He was a part of the Camilla Roy tribe, which their country is approximately 75,000 square kilometres throughout Singleton in the Hunter Valley stretching all the way into Nindangully in the South East Queensland. This is where Charlton got his stage name from the Camilla Roy tribe, taking the last part, Leroy, and just adding the kid before it. Here's him explaining the meaning to Killy Thorpe on Curry Radio. Um, well, you know... So it was interesting. I was I was always trying to find uh, find a cool name to go by because my name is just pretty like my name is pretty boring. Like just Charles and Howard just sounds like a sounds like a like I don't know just like the most plain. <laughs> name ever. But uh, so um, I don't know. So obviously um, you know I was talking to my mum a lot, um, and then obviously it comes from you know the um, Camilla Roy tribe, and that's you know, the tribe that my family um, is from. And then the weird coincidence is after I was like, okay, I'll shorten it to make it, you know, Leroy, you know, like, like a little, like, like a nickname type of thing. Years later, I found out. So my dad comes from like French heritage and the way Leroy is spelled in French means the king. So it was just kind of like a, a strange coincidence that it just all kind of worked out. And I was like, oh yeah, this is meant to be. I'm keeping it. <laughs> Other descendants of the Camilla Roy tribe are journalist Brooke Boney, North Melbourne AFL player Taryn Thomas, former test bowler Jason Gillespie, and singer-songwriter Thelma Plum. He spent most of his early childhood in Waterloo, Redfern area, but his parents would split up at a very young age. Him and his brother Austin went to live with their mother in Broken Hill, New South Wales with Leroy's grandparents. Here he would go to school and live life as a normal kid, doing all things from swimming carnivals to playing AFL. He was even announced house captain at one stage. Myself, also being from a split family, I can relate to how much he moved around as a kid and your parents just do whatever works at the time and the financial struggle can be real. So getting help from other family members can play a big part in helping you put food on the table. It was also around this time that Leroy got super close with his uncle Wayne who would help their family with money and assist his mother with finding consistent work. His uncle would become a massive part in their life. He said he struggled to find real friends around this time because he was always the new kid at school. But one thing he always loved was music. 
He would begin recording raps onto his mum's old iPhones when he was just four or five years old and always dreamt of becoming a favourite rapper. When I was younger and I used to fucking do like little freestyle raps, uh, grab my mum's fucking iPhone fucking three or whatever and do little you know, freestyle raps and put him on Facebook and stuff. He would then attend Sacred Heart College in Adelaide to finish off his schooling because his mother thought moving away from Broken Hill would land him better opportunities in the future. It's said that his uncle helped pay for his schooling as the fees can vary from roughly $3,000 to $5,000 per year. It's very normal for Australian kids who grow up in the country to go to boarding high schools in the cities for better opportunities. Even if that means driving hours and hours, Australia is such a big place, so many parents will drive their kids across the country for better opportunities, whether that's for schooling or sport. Sadly, when he was just 15 years old, with so much going on in his life, his uncle was murdered in Thailand. The reason behind this is unknown, but it affected Leroy a lot as he looked up to his uncle as a role model. I have to mention right now that I've seen YouTubers with millions of subscribers claim to be, in brackets, good journalists, make videos about his upbringing until now being fake. It's well known that his mother and father separated at a young age, and to think otherwise and get your information off a Facebook photo is pathetic journalism. And I'm not even claiming to be a good journalist, this is just my passion. Around 12 or 13 years old, he would get the attention from a DJ in Adelaide by the name of DJ Ladykiller, also known as Marcus. Marcus would see his talent and quickly become his mentor and producer, and they would form a duo called the Dream Team. Although Marcus was nearly 20 and the kid Leroy was roughly 12 years old, the duo would work well together. His mum would also be their biggest supporter, posting their music all over Facebook and using her connections trying to get anyone in the music industry to hear them. Marcus would often pick Leroy up from his school and home and take him to his garage which he transformed into a studio. Here they would record music and even back then Marcus would praise Leroy's work rate. He would often tell Marcus he would be here at 7 o'clock in the morning to record but like most rappers he assumed he wasn't serious. But to his surprise Leroy was always on time willing to put his head down and work. The duo would get small gigs throughout Adelaide but it was also difficult as Leroy was under the age of 18 which made it hard to get venues to allow him to perform. Not many of their tracks exist anymore but they did a remix to Future's Codeine Crazy which is still on YouTube through Blood Juice's channel if you want to check that out. The duo would eventually split. The reasons are unknown, but it was around the time Leroy moved back to Waterloo, Sydney for family reasons. And him, still being just 12 or 13 years old, there's no way he could have stayed in Adelaide and continued his career with Marcus, as Adelaide to Sydney is over a 15 hour drive. Marcus's role in Leroy's career should never go unnoticed, and if you really want to support him, go check out his music. You can find him on any streaming platforms under the name Marcus Jr. I'll leave a link in the description. I also think people forget how young the kid Leroy was back then. He was just 12 or 13 years old, so whatever your parents are doing, you're doing. There's no way he was staying in Adelaide with a man in his 20s to pursue a music career that at the time still seemed like a near on impossible goal. Also, Adelaide back then wasn't known as a hip hop hub, besides act like Hilltop Hoods, but they were already at stadium status. So a lot has been said about him leaving Marcus behind, but in my opinion, he was just a kid to think of all the people I knew at 13 years old, I wouldn't even say hello if I walked past them today. You don't even know yourself that young, and you should just be able to be a kid and enjoy the simple things in life and have fun before you grow up and experience what life really is. He would then get the attention from legendary hip hop personnel Zig and All, who would manage Leroy after noticing how much talent he had, and this is where his career would really start to get traction when he moved back to Waterloo. I spent about eight months in Adelaide. Really? I went to boarding school over there oh, for like cool. eight months. Um, which was interesting. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I was a fan favorite with the kids over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, I guess now I, I might be, I guess now maybe everyone says that they loved hanging out with me, yeah, but I was gonna I, say. that wasn't, that wasn't really the case, uh, <laughs> back then, but. 
He would eventually move back to Waterloo, Sydney, and this is where his career really started. Also, for those who think Leroy denies living in Broken Hill, he even talks about it on his track Nonstop Freestyle. He says, And I reside in South Sydney, yeah, that's where I'm at. Catching government checks, we don't pay no tax. Catching trains to the city, we don't do no tap. Kenny boy, keep the flip phone, buddy, do no trap. Moving from the country, what a change. Also featuring in this clip is his good friend, Kenny from the block, who he often raps about and continues to be one of his best friends to this day. While he was now back in Sydney, around Redfern and Waterloo area, and what played a big part in his life was the local youth centres and local festivals like Waterloo Fernside Festival, where Leroy actually performed at when he was about 13 years old. First time festival, can I mess with too many people cause they all skeptical? Take it day by day, staying in control, young kid going hard, boy you better check my phone. Leroy actually came back to the same youth centre in 2022 and donated $100,000 to it as he heard it was struggling and it was close to shutting down for good. This was the Factory Youth Centre. He said that this place helped him become the person he is today and kept him and hundreds of other kids off the streets and helped them focus their attention more on things like music, arts and sports. I think this is one of the best things Leroy has done and shows he never forgot where he came from. For me, growing up there was... I mean, it impacted me a lot, you know, it helped shape who I am today and it was one of those things that helped me and, and loads of other kids in the community, I think, like grow, um, not only as people, but creatively, always kept, kept us out of trouble. And I think, you know, it's funny, I wonder like sometimes like without that, who knows, you know, like who knows where I would have been when I heard that, um, you know, they were thinking about cutting funding or something like that. He also had some sort of scholarship to go to an Australian performing arts grammar school. He said in interviews he would only have to attend school four days a week and the other three days he would focus solely on music. A fun fact, rapper Esso from Bliss and Esso also went to a similar school growing up. With DJ Ziggy, aka Ziganor, now managing the kid, he would help guide him in the right direction to take his music career to the next level. While Leroy had so much talent and with Marcus being in Adelaide over 15 hours away, he didn't have much guidance or studio access at the time and we always forget he was still 13 years old. So Ziggy would lead Leroy in the right directions and get him involved with other producers, rappers and musicians from all over Sydney. Some of the producers and rappers he got close with was Mixed by Mixtry, rapper Blessed, formerly known as Miracle, producers Dopamine and Keanu Beats. The other one of these people was now international super producer Khalid Romain, who instantly seen Leroy's talent and was willing to work with him straight away. He still remains close to all these producers today and they all worked on his Fuck Love projects which is good to see Leroy still showing the love to them back then. But all these artists and producers have gone on to have successful careers solo and have worked with artists from all over the world. Who are some of uh, my favourite producers? Um, Han, Khaled, um, Dopamine, uh, Keanu, uh, Miracle, all five of those people are from Australia, by the way, and I might be biased, but I'm really not, they're really the best in the world, best producers in the world, and they're all from Australia. <laughs> Another one of those producers he formed a close relationship with, and you couldn't tell the Roy story without him, and I'm talking about Han. It's said they met each other at Sydney rapper Manu Crooks' show and both had aspiring dreams to make it in the music industry and instantly clicked. Han has worked on numerous Leroy hits including Not Sober and the massive single Stay with Justin Bieber. When Leroy signed with Grey Day, Han even went over to America and lived with Leroy for a while and he was his DJ and go-to producer. Unfortunately, since Leroy left A-grade management, we haven't seen much of them together since the split. But hopefully in the future they patch up their differences, if there even is any, and continue to give us great music. A huge part of Leroy's journey involved the Dream Big Factory, which was a bunch of Sydney artists such as Manu Crooks, b -Wise, Blessed, I Am Solo, Will Star, M For Rose, Clapback and many more. I had him on the show before, I just yeah. moved into a studio in Alexandria um, 
called Dream Big or like Dream Big Factory and there was like heaps of people there um, like myself, Manu Crooks, um, Zig, Blessed, Zig, um, Solo, IE, IE, Dopamine, Amphor Rose, Kid Leroy, um, Proper Crew, right? uh, Will Star, like, bro, uh, Sabio, uh, Clapback, like, yeah. Yeah, we, were, uh, we were in there, bro. Yeah. This was a place for any creatives around Sydney to lock into a studio day in, day out, working on their craft. For those who might not be aware of any of these artists, a lot of them are a big part of the reason Australian hip-hop is where it is today, and they played a big hand in shifting the sound to a bigger audience. These artists would help teach Leroy about all things music and industry, and really showed him what hard work looks like. The door was always open for Leroy, and to have so many peers who were willing to help you succeed played a huge role in Leroy's career. Not only did he have the talent, he now had access to proper studios and genuine good producers and engineers who were willing to take the time and guide him. He even featured in the video for Manu Crooks' groundbreaking single, Day Ones. This type of thing would go a long way for a young kid trying to make it. Just to be around such a top tier artist like Manu Crooks and for him to allow Leroy to be around a proper film crew and show him what it takes to put out quality music and a video to match. The love of the day. You have to remember, Leroy was still super young at this time, roughly 14 years old. So for him to have drive and hunger back then is crazy. Also, to be so young in the city of Sydney with no money, he had to rely on a lot of other people to help him with things like accommodation and lifts to and from the studio. Khaled, who is still his go-to producer, would often pick Leroy up and drop him off at the studio day in, day out. He even lived at I Am Solo in JD's house for a while, staying on the couch. That's how much people believed in him even back then. Funny story about Kid Leroy. Kid Leroy, he used to live in my house. Really? Yeah, he used to sleep on my couch. Yeah. Far out. Yeah, we talk. We do. We like taught him. Like. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. long ago? He actually speaks about it on one of his songs. Yeah, but like you know, like yeah, Leroy. Yeah, well, I've known Leroy since he was 12, 13. How old is he now? He's like eighteen or something. Fuck, he's young. Yeah, he came to that that shoot I was talking about earlier. Like that, he came there. That's mm. where he kind of like. I think he was doing music before that, but like that's where. Like he saw a lot of us, like Manu Crooks and Amphor and that. Like, yeah, you know, really, yeah. What's it like then seeing him take off? Must be crazy. I'm still kind of like shook about it. I'm like, what the hell? Like this kid was literally on my couch. I have some funny stories of that kid too. Like he used to have like parties at my house yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, and he would age. party with his friends. Like we would have parties at my house, and then like he'll be like, "Oh, uncle, can I have? Can I? Can my friends stay here? We want to keep partying." Um, because we would go out. The fucking strip club or whatever, or yeah. the other clubs or whatever, and then he'll be like, he'll, I'll be like, yeah, but if you if it's a mess when I get back, I'm giving you a hiding. He's like, no, nah, wait, wait, wait. Was it a mess? Nah, nah, nah. He gets his car. He's a good kid. Yeah, but he's mad. Like he he would just like record and. Has he always had it? Yeah, he, he's different. He's mm. different. Yeah, he's a he's a different. Different. There's just different. Hard to explain. His work ethic is crazy. Yeah. Like he'll just go. He'll just be like, Uncle, can I record? Because we have a uh, studio at our in our living room, and he'll be like, Uncle, can I can I can I record? Can I? Record? Just always on the go. <laughs> yeah. Always on the go. It's funny. It's funny. He's a funny kid. Though. What's yeah. working out for him now, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He's killing it, man. Like he's just. While he had a few singles out, the biggest one being Disconnect, the whole time he was working on his debut EP titled 14 with a Dream. It was also executive produced by Blessed, formerly known as Miracle, mainly in the Dream Big Studios. It's a five track EP and the talent shines right through the project. His flows and melodies are insane for a 14 year old. You can definitely see the Manu Crooks influence, but it was also groundbreaking as the Aussie hip hop scene was more focused on bars and not many were focusing on the catchy choruses and melodic traps similar to the SoundCloud wave in the US. The biggest track off the project was definitely Blessings. This was the song that Little Bibby heard and wanted to sign him off. Also, local radio stations like Triple J would often play Blessings and Disconnect throughout the day. Start a Kid Leroy's career, not saying that you, you, you made him, mm. but you were around at the start. You helped produce for him. Even one of his, I will call, maybe a breakout hit, maybe mm. not, but it put a lot of eyes on him. Yeah. Um, blessings. Blessings, yeah. Blessings, blessed, funny yeah. that. Um, what was it like working with a young Leroy? Mm. It, was, uh, it was inspiring mm. um, because I believe he's a star seed. I don't think he's from this planet <laughs> at yeah. all. You're going to have to explain that to us one day, man. Star seeds? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain we'll it to you. We'll get out there. Sure. 
But um, but yeah, he's a a very special, a very special kid. And just like I was saying for myself at a young age, he's a sponge, someone who just um, was able to adapt and learn from his environment and channel also, he channels his ancestry, which is also, you know, mm -hmm. the Australian indigenous ancestry. So um, yeah, he's just someone that's super inspirational. And just look at him now, he's one of the Flying. biggest artists on planet Earth. So. And he's here right now. Yeah. You keep in contact with him these days? A little bit here and there, but like, you know, he's, he's literally- Doing his thing. Yeah, he's literally up there doing his thing. So I'm, I don't want to bother him. So I'm doing his thing. Keep, Understandable. Keep shining, that's it. He was also notorious for making his way into events and meeting already established international artists while he was underage. Some of those artists he would meet and show his music to was Ray Shremmett and Lil Skies. He also famously sent a girl up to Ray Shremmett's hotel when she played them his music and then they invited him up. He also managed to get backstage when Compton rapper YG was touring Australia and his producer Khaled helped him link up with A Boogie with the hoodie in the studio and record a track that never got released. He also freestyled to Ben Simmons and managed to get into the studio with Little Skies. Skies would then post the snippet on his Instagram and fans would go crazy and ask him who the Kid Leroy was. The track was never officially released, but it's on YouTube, it's called Moving. This just shows the level of dedication the kid had way back then before he blew up. Um, when me and JD sent a girl up to, um, to Ray Shremmer's DJ's room, um, to go play him my music. And then he was like, all right, send him up. And then he introduced us to like Sway Lee and shit. And that, that's probably like one of the crazy stories. Um, I mean, I mean, a boogie was another crazy story because, um, I had no money at the time and Khaled, the dude who's actually in there right now, um, working on the song. He was like, yo, I have a mate um, who's like whose kid wants to wants to rap and like needs some songs written. Um, and like it, it, it'll be a good, good, good job like for you to do. Like it'll be like paid money, like everything. So um, I was like, fuck, yeah. So <laughs> he would also famously meet Juice World at Butter Sydney, which is a very unique chicken shop that hosts many events for artists like Post Malone, ASAP Ferg and the Wu-Tang Clan. The story goes that the Kid Leroy lined up for a meet and greet and got chatting to Juice World after everyone told him Leroy was the next one to blow from Australia. It's crazy that not long after this famous meeting, Leroy would support Juice World on his Australian tour and sign to the same label as Juice. At this meet and greet, you also see them exchanging numbers, which is crazy confidence, especially from a kid in Australia to know in his mind that he'll one day be on Juice World's level. I, I literally just signed like a few weeks ago. Oh, shit. I just signed a uh, Columbia, but Congrats. thank you. But it's, it's through like a uh, great day, like little, little baby. Um, I'm 15. He would also take any opportunity he could to perform his music live. While he didn't have a lot of music out and promoters weren't super keen on booking a 15 year old kid, many other artists would use their platform to bring Laurie out during their sets. Such as Triple One and famously Manu Crooks and B-Wise brought the kid out at 2018 at their Listen Out Festival set. For them to bring the kid out at such a big festival should never go unnoticed. Also, Nara rapper Nookie would play a big role in Leroy's life, often kicking him knowledge but also helping him and his brother with everyday things like food and studio access. Nookie would also get Leroy on stage any chance he would get and let him perform whether that meant sneaking him into venues underage. He'd also tell the crowd to follow Leroy's Instagram just to get his name out there. The belief Nookie had in the kid Leroy back then was crazy. Six. Seven! Alright, seven, fuck yeah. You just need to get a photo of this moment, alright? Fucking us, my friend! And the wires have got your phones out, can everybody get on Instagram real quick? Follow the kid Leroy, trust me, you got a family for it later. When something happens, and something as big as what I'm about to talk about happens, everyone knows where they were, where they met him, where they this and that. But you, I, I was there when you brought out this buck little kid from the fucking Housos of Waterloo. I was in the crowd when you brought this little kid out wearing all Rabbitohs kit, the kid yeah. Leroy, before yeah, yeah. anyone knew anything, before he probably even had- Yeah, yeah, well, man, like, I can't take credit for, for Charlton, bros, like, he had 
all the fucking talent and drive in the world like that was the crazy thing about about Leroy man like not only did he have the drive and ambition but he had the talent to back it up and like he would he wouldn't take no for an answer like seen him get into scenarios and places where like a 14 year old (laughs) shouldn't be in there like um man all sorts of funny stories man like there was a little peep yarn right so little piece videographer was out out here for a show so at his peak like an american yeah, rapper's yeah, out here. yeah 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 and um so he knew one of the like one of the boys jd like used to when people would come over sydney and shit like used to used to just take them around so jd had a little party at a house so at this house was jd like ie the singer right that's jd travi p was there solo was there and it was just like a house where everyone would just just make music this video dude comes out they show him some of Leroy's stuff they send it to the little peep. Little peep's like, fuck, this is mad. Inboxes Leroy straight away, boom. Mm. He ended up at the hotel room with um, Sway Lee at yeah. one point. The one thing I couldn't sneak him into, but it didn't matter anyway, because he ended up linking with him a few days after, was Hidden Festival, the one that uh, Adam22 was kind of yeah, hosting yeah. or whatever. The, um, the YouTuber. Yeah. The hip-hop YouTuber, yeah. That's the only thing I couldn't get. Oh, he ended up giving him a, him a tour of the houses. Yeah, 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 bro. yeah, yeah. So, like, Leroy, Leroy yeah. was at the, at the fence, at the gate. He's like, Unk, can you get me in? Unk, can you get me in? I was like, I'm going to try, bro. I'm going to try. But that's not, the security was tight as fuck. They weren't, it wasn't happening. But he ended up linking with him a few days after anyway. So it was all, all good. But, and um, yeah, Rick, Rick bring Leroy through. And I was like, and, um, you know, he come through, oh, Nooks, mad, what's doing, bro? Like, you know what I mean? Blackfellas, we all, you know, we know each other. It was like, when Briggs, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like, I'd be doing, I've been doing my thing, by this point, so Leroy kind of you knew who I was and shit. Came through and said, "Oh, show us what you got, young fella." Jumped on the mic. Fuck. Mm-hmm. I said to Rick, "Bro, this is the one, eh? Like, like proper. It was like some Neo and the Matrix shit, you yeah. know? Like it was the fucking the 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 one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was the one. You could tell. It was just just something else. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, you know, like I used to go see him and his little brother Oz." down around Redfern and that I'll be giving them twenty dollars, buy them feeds and shit like that. Just, you know, big family shit. Just I'm By now, the kid Leroy's name was making noise all through Sydney and he was showing his face anywhere he could. Another thing he'd done that worked in his favour was enter Triple J's annual Unearth competition. For those who don't know, Triple J is a massive youth radio station that broadcasts all across Australia and they run an unearthed competition every year, which is a chance for new artists to get their music heard and win things like studio sessions, airplay and slots at festivals. Leroy entered his song Disconnect the night before the cutout date and ended up coming second in the competition. This was huge at the time as it was the first time a lot of people around the country first heard Leroy's music once he got played on Triple J. He also famously got interviewed by Ben and Liam and shouted at his Instagram, again showing his hustle mentality while still being in his early teens. Another big move was performing alongside Triple One at the No Jumper Street X pop-up show. This was huge in Australia at the time, as No Jumper was at its peak and Street X being a massive streetwear brand. While Adam22 was in Australia, he kept getting told about a kid from Redfern, Waterloo, so he ended up vlogging a trip to Leroy's neighbourhood and giving him an interview and putting it on YouTube. It now has over 3 million views. A dope part about that whole vlog that some people might not know about is when they go to the flats and Leroy hugs the kid in the red t-shirt. His name is Lil Arts and he's also a rapper and a longtime friend of Leroy's. When Leroy actually came back in 2022 for his arena tours, he let Lil Arts open for him and gave him that exposure to such a big crowd. I thought this is one of the dopest things he's done. He would also visit Street X in Perth when he came back in 2022 and showed them the love they showed him when he was just a kid trying to make it. Alright man. Broski, how's that? <laughs> Bro, that was fucking so lit. She was packed out, people was on the street. People were getting fucking lit, mosh pit, everything was next level. We shut it down. The mosh pit was great. Throughout the time he was still hustling throughout Sydney, he would become very close with the infamous rap group 1-4 through 1-4's manager Rick. Rick would often book them into the same studio sessions and they would instantly click, record music and also become super close. 1-4 said in interviews they class him as a little brother and a part of their crew. 
They have their song My City Together, which has 23 million Spotify plays. But some of their best work together is some unreleased songs on YouTube. You should check them out. While the police stopped one for performing any shows whatsoever, while Roy was doing his first headline tour, he actually brought out one four during his set in Sydney. This was huge at the time, for Leroy to risk his show being cancelled for one four to perform a couple of songs goes to show the relationship they have. I hope we get some more music from them in the future. I'm gonna fucking give them what they deserve and they're gonna come out here and do a few songs for us tonight. Let's fucking go Sydney! Make some noise for your very own one four. From here, he would eventually sign with Lil Bibby and Grade A after Bibby heard his song Blessings. And we all know how successful Leroy has gone on to be, from McDonald's meals to number one albums to Fortnite concerts. But you don't need me telling you about the stuff everyone already knows. A lot has been said about Leroy's come up, so my goal today was to show the rest of the world how hard he actually hustled and made his face known throughout Australia before blowing up overseas. And it's hard for other YouTube channels to make videos on his come up from the other side of the world without doing proper research. So believe what you want about his come up, but you have to respect the man's hustle, especially at such a young age. This stuff doesn't happen to everyday Australian rappers. The Kid Leroy is a born star. And as a fellow Australian and a massive music fan, I couldn't be more proud of how far he's come. Thanks for watching. Just his hustle, man. It's like, it wasn't like, from the interviews and stuff, I got the sense that, you know, he's a very switched on kid, um, obviously very talented um, and all that. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of young guys who are talented, you know, vocally. Um, you know, now they're getting younger and younger, um, especially after Leroy, because people have seen what happened. A lot of kids are good at singing and, and, and doing this and doing that, but like his hustle was insane. Like, I remember like, <laughs> Just seeing him out at parties, like, I'm like, how are you out this late? It's like 11 o'clock, like, go to bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, like, seeing him at parties, just networking, talking to the right people, doing this, doing that. Personally, I remember with Triple One, we supported Lil Xan. And I didn't know Leroy well at all at this point. This was, this probably would have been 2018, I believe. Um, I remember looking at my phone. I had 30 missed calls on my phone. Random number, didn't know, had no idea who it was, like... <laughs> Get a text message, hey man, it's Leroy. I'm waiting outside the Metro Theater, I can't get in. Like, do you reckon you could like, you know, sneak me in? Cause I really need a free style for Lil Xan. And I'm kind of like, man, it's, obviously at that age, you don't understand how tours work. It's not always like, when you're at the support act, you're not always buddy buddy with the headliner. You know what I mean? Lil Xan was off the other side of the venue, not talking to us, you know what I mean? But like, he was out there and then he actually managed to get my friend's lanyard and he came in, I'm pretty sure he actually met up with Lil Xan. And, I heard heaps of those stories, like him sneaking up to the hotel of, you know, like Sway Lee and Ray Shremard, him waiting outside the hotel to freestyle for Ben Simmons. Like, you know, all these sort of things, like just crazy, crazy hustle. Like you could just tell he wanted it so bad, you know what I mean? And I don't know where he got that from, whether that was, you know, a, a manager pushed him or like that's just instilled in him. Like the drive was just so insane. And I think that's been so critical to his success. And you know, obviously as well, he's like a crazy songwriter, you know, like his hooks are just like so addictive and, and all that, like, but I really do think it's his, it's his hustle, which really gave him that kind of like X factor. And obviously it's worked, you know, like I never thought, like I always knew he was like incredibly talented, you know, I've always supported him from the first day, but to see him literally become, you know, the number one on billboard, you know, like, like you said, like I never thought it would have happened this quick. 